This podcast is brought to you by Voice and Vision, bringing help, hope, and healing to individuals, families, and communities affected by mental illness, addictions, and disabilities in southeastern Pennsylvania. Financial support for this podcast is provided by a Veterans Trust Fund grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Military and Veterans Affairs. Welcome to Untold Valor, a podcast with a unique focus on veterans, featuring stories of courage, recovery, perseverance, and strength. Listen to hear veterans share their perspectives on what it's like to battle mental health challenges, combat addictions, and overcome other adversities unique to those who have served. And it's time for another episode of Untold Valor, where Reverend Ben, my co-host, is going to be joining me to talk a little bit about his time in the service and just mental health and recovery and all the things we share here on the podcast. Reverend Ben, welcome in, sir. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on today. Of course, absolutely. So I appreciate your time whenever you come on and help me chat with the other veterans as well. But let's talk a little bit about you this go-around. Tell me about yourself while you were in the service. So, you know, when did you join? Why did you join? Well, you know, my, my story runs kind of parallel with uh, Roy's story from the other episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I was 17 years old, and I was about to get in a whole lot of trouble. So my my choices were the military or the penitentiary. Mm. So um, I made the decision to go into the military, which made a man out of me, by the way. And I'm glad I made that choice. However, there were some challenges along the way. I originally joined the military. I joined the Navy. I didn't want to be in the Marine Corps. I didn't want to be in the Army. And I didn't want to be in the Air Force. I wanted to be in the Navy. So I signed up for the Navy, went to boot camp. For the first time in my life, I was on my own, seeing the seeing the, the country all by myself, independently. But one thing happened when I was when I was in the military. I told you I was 17 when I went in. Mm-hmm. But in the military, everybody's a man. There's no um age for drinking. Like in the civilian world, you got to be 21. In the military, if you're in the military, you can drink. So lo and behold, I fell in love with alcohol because I found out that by the extensive training and things that I experienced, places we would go, alcohol would take off the edge and um, sometimes even give you some liquid courage. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter's in the Navy, and uh, yeah, same same conversation sometime with her. Uh, what was your? What did you wind up as you uh, left the service? What did you rent your rank? I was a um, not commissioned officer. Mm. I was an E four. That would be a second class corpsman. I ended up with the Marines anyway. Mm. Um, okay, because when I went to the Navy, I went to core school. That, that's the hospital corpsman, right? Who uh, attend the hospitals, the naval and um, Marine Corps bases. Medicine was something that I was interested in. However, once I finished my training at uh, San Diego Balboa Naval School of Health Sciences, I ended up at Camp Pendleton, Camp Lejeune. I mean, um, Camp Pendleton in um, California, California. Oceanside, mm-hmm. for um, more training, FMF training, and to become um, field ready. In a sense, it was like Marine boot camp. And uh, from that point on, except for one duty station, I was at the Naval Academy briefly as a trainer for the team. But other than that, all my other time in the service was spent with the Marine Corps on contingency forces and extensive training. You know, we talked a little bit. So you transferred, you went from the Navy to the Marines, and, uh, you know, you talked about alcohol taking the edge off. And one of the things here on the podcast uh, is to talk, uh, you know, with veterans about their struggles and, and things that happen and how to get some help. Uh, did that alcohol follow you from branch to branch? Did it did it get better? Did it get worse? Uh, and, and if so, what kind of treatment did you start to look at? Well, you know, um, when I was on Camp Pendleton, there was a club called the Listed Men's Club. Mm-hmm. And there was nothing but a bunch of men in there, and all we were doing was drinking. A bunch of men drinking. That was our pastime. And then we would go on field exercises. The battalion commander would so graciously send out a box truck of cold beer. So we made they made sure we had plenty of cold beer and plenty of cold drinks. That, that was that was insured. That was not anything to ever doubt. There was always a drink at hand. Yeah, for sure. And and so when uh 
I mean, did you recognize that you were becoming an alcoholic or did you become one? And, and if so, what kind of treatment, you know, were, did you ask for help in the service? What did that look like? Well, when I was in the service, you couldn't have told me I was an alcoholic. Yeah, true. Because um, I wasn't the person who per se would um, drink all day, every day. I didn't drink to survive and I didn't survive to drink, but I did drink extensively when I did drink mm. and I could drink. I could drink anybody under the table, and um, I, I, I proud, I, you know, I proud myself on that. That I could drink more than anybody else. It wasn't until after I got out of military, you know, we just called this. This episode is called Untold Valor. Well, I got the battle after the battle. Mm. That's the untold valor of uh, the things that I experienced when I when I got out of the military. There was no debriefing or anything like that. It was just you drop into civilian life, and you're on your own. So I thought anyway, I didn't know that there were programs out there for veterans. And the drinking took off to another level and other drugs came into play. Mm. So it really got bad. It got bad real fast. And I was depressed. I didn't know I was depressed at the time, but I was severely depressed. And alcohol was kind of a, uh, like like Roy said, the thing that took me outside of myself. Then I found other drugs like cocaine and things like that that really took me outside of myself. And actually, I ended up being spiritually bankrupt. What kind of helped you identify and, and change the you know, turn the corner? I suppose. Well, I have to tell you this, Mark. Sure. What really brought me to my knees was cocaine. Right. When I got addicted to cocaine, and then um, crack cocaine came about. When I first started doing cocaine, it was free basin. It was a thing for the elite. Um, but as it as it got as time went on, it progressed. It became a common drug for anybody. It became a five dollar fix, and you know I got um, addicted. I lived to use, and I used to live. That's all I did. Mm. I worked hard on my job, but my paycheck on my way home on payday, I had a plan, and it always included getting some cocaine and getting a woman. And that was that. That was a rabbit hole that I went down that um, showed me hell. I was in hell because there were days that I didn't want to wake up. There were days that I wish I would just die in my sleep. Wow. And I did not want to exist anymore. So what helped you turn that corner, Reverend? What are you doing? What are you doing now? What are the things that kind of uh, brought you from that side to where you are today? Well, initially, um, I've been in several treatment facilities. The first one I was in was years ago. I, I didn't take it serious. I didn't take it serious because I thought I had a cocaine problem. I didn't know I had a me problem. Mm. But um, when I began to see, as I got older, through different programs and rehabilitation facilities, I began to hear other people's stories. And see, I wasn't one who ate out of trash cans. I was not one who slept in abandoned cars. But when I began to hear stories like that from people who actually lived that, then the fear of God was in me to change my life. Mm. Because that was my I never, but it was waiting for me. Yes, being homeless was waiting for me. Um, eating out of garbage cans was waiting for me. Sleeping in abandoned cars was waiting for me. So I made sure that I did what I had to do to avoid that that insanity from coming into my life. So you kind of saw that writing on the wall if you kept going the path you were going and realized you had to make a change? I realized I had to make a change. I saw the writing on the wall. I was spiritually bankrupt. As you know, I'm Reverend Ben, so that means that I, I am a reverend and I'm a minister of the gospel. And um, that was that's where my true deliverance came from, was my relationship with God. I was in 12-step programs. I sponsored people. I was sponsored. I had years and years of sobriety through, through NA and through other 12-step groups. But my relief finally came from my salvation mm. and my surrendering to God and serving him. And once I began to serve God in spirit and in truth, my life began to change. Kind of like what Roy said, when you start to help other people, it's kind of like your your, your situations and your problems kind of go on the back burner because you're more focused on helping others. And to me, that's the key to getting better is to forget about your, your stuff and help somebody else. That's what happened to me. But ultimately, I found my resolve in, um, in Jesus Christ. That's, that's just my story. That's what happened with me. And today, as uh, 
I was the least likely to uh, succeed in my family because I've been in jails, institutions, and almost dead. But today, I'm working on my master's degree. Today, I'm a leader in my community. Today, I am uh, a servant of God, and I try to feed as many people as I can. So I've been in the darkness, and now God has got me in the marvelous light. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all that. That's uh, really beautiful. And that's part of the reason that you're also doing the podcast and, and doing the, some of the things that you're doing in the community is, is also trying to talk with and, and help other veterans, correct? Exactly. Exactly. I want to spread the good news. I want to spread the solution. We don't have to live in misery. I see veterans in the community. One, one veteran in particular had two strokes already mm. and barely walked down the street. Got a 100% disability. Two strokes, still buying crack, dragging one leg down the street. All his whole check goes to the drug dealers. Whole check. And I try to talk to these guys and, and, and pray with these guys and, and, and let them know that they don't have to live like that anymore. They don't have – it's a choice today. And um, unfortunately, some, some people get it, some people don't. But, you know, as they say, some must die so that others can live. Very true. So what's the what's the main takeaway you'd like to share with the listeners and and folks who hopefully you know uh, will will listen to the podcast and listen to other people's story? Any message you'd like to share with them? You know what I would like to share is I don't care how how far down the scales you have gone. I don't care what drugs you have done. I don't care what you did or what you did not do. That God has an answer for you. He has an answer for all of us. It reminds me of a uh, of David, the little. Shepherd boy, who was who who took down a giant with just a rock and a sling, and 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 so 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 we also have what God has given us, be it a rock a sling, or be it a staff like Moses had. Whatever God gives us, we have to use it. But first, we have to realize that we are somebody. God has created us to do something. He's given us purpose and power. Uh, that's the encouraging words I would leave with anybody. That you do have purpose, and God has given you power. We just have to know that and act on it. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have uh, some more guests on the future episodes. So make sure you stick around and tune into another episode of Untold Valor. You've been listening to Untold Valor by Voice and Vision. We hope you found the information and resources discussed today helpful. As always, thank you for listening and for your support. Remember to stay connected with us through our various social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to visit the website, voiceandvisioninc.org. That's voiceandvisioninc.org, where you can sign up for our blog and find free resources and information on upcoming events, webinars, workshops, and get support. You can also access our free help and hope guide for individuals and families struggling with substance use and addiction. If someone you know is struggling, please reach out for help because you and your life matter. Remember, the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is available to you at any time by dialing 988. We are all ambassadors of hope and recovery. And if you want to share your story, please contact us. Compeer Corps is also looking for veteran mentor volunteers and veteran participants. To find out more information about Compeer Corps, please call 610-541-0790. That's 610-541-0790. You can find all the links and contact information for the resources mentioned on today's episode by checking the description and the show notes section of your app. Thank you again for tuning in and for your support. Until next time, this has been Untold Valor.